Um, there's three qualities that Lynn possesses, you know, LB possesses. possesses. Number one, he, he has a gift from God. He's very talented, right? Um, so you, you take that. You have to be talented to play at the ultimate level, and the NFL is the ultimate level. So he's talented enough. We know that. The other thing that he, he um, possesses is his will to win. You talk about players who really want to, to win. Lynn hates to lose more than he wants to win. A lot of players say, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose. But now you have to hate to lose, and Lynn hates to lose. Thirdly, um, his football IQ, I've, I've told people this, and I would tell you, is off the chart. See, that gets kind of pushed to the back burner because of, because of his immense ability. But his football IQ is off the chart. Mm -hmm. When he came here, how long did it take you to say, and this kid is something different? It doesn't take long. I mean, through this is 33 years for me, Ryan, that I've been coaching and warm between two sports. Um, like when James Daniels was a sophomore, he's an NFL lineman, okay? Um, when Mario was here, he's an NFL receiver. Lynn Bolden is here, he's an NFL player, whatever he wants to do. I don't care if it's a defensive back, I don't care if it's a receiver, he's that talented. So it didn't, didn't take long, right? It, it doesn't take long to see the special ones. Mm -hmm. You mentioned those three attributes, you know, one other thing I, you know, just my, in my experience with Lynn for four years in high school was leadership ability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had it as a freshman mm -hmm. at Liberty. He came to a much bigger, much more competitive program mm -hmm. here at Warren Harding. Mm -hmm. And in the first scrimmage, he's running out with the flag. And I'm like, man, that is so <laughs> uncommon for a kid to be able to grab a locker room and say, rally around me. And what you just said, that's what he did. Uh, I categorize Lynn. Lynn is an alpha dog, okay? So anytime we basically suited up, our guys rallied. He galvanized our players, our community, and get on my shoulders and, we're, we're, you know, enjoy the ride. That's, that's what Lynn brought to the table. And just, again, he hated to lose. So you were down. He found a way. So you talk about carrying the flag out. Um, you know, we would, we would have, we have these, every Wednesday in the summer we have competition days. Okay. So Lynn's team and we kind of balance the team out. The loser gets water, the winner gets Gatorade. Okay. And it's, it's competitive, Ryan. I mean, we make it really tough. So Lynn's team kept winning. So I came in. You know, as I'm picking the teams, I said, you know what, I got I to gotta tip this thing so his team will lose. And I thought I had it. Well, the team that he's going against, uh, it's the fourth down. They have the ball, like, on the five-yard line. Kid's going in. Lynn's, Lynn's on defense at safety. Kid has an alley. He's going in to score. Lynn is, like, shot out of a cannon and just rocked him on the one-yard line. Kid didn't score. Lynn, Lynn didn't want to lose. And I'm telling you, I tipped the scales so his team would lose. That that's Lynn. That's how I epitomize Lynn. There were games and moments that stick out to me. You know, as as his head coach here at Harding, can you maybe take me through a game where you thought, this is a game that I'm gonna be telling people about for a long time? What game do you want me to start, right? I, mean, I want to start with Maslin. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of that's the one. That's the one. I mean, that stands out down at Maslin. I, I don't know, four or five touchdowns, three hundred some odd yards. I mean, whatever numbers that he had that, down there, um, that game sticks out. Um, the Chardon playoff game sticks out. Uh, I think he accounted for six touchdowns. I think he ran for five or four and threw one. Um, um, the Cleveland Heights game there, uh, we had jumped out to a big lead. And I remember you you were covering that game. And um, we had jumped out to a big lead. Cleveland Heights you know, came back a little bit and was key. It was a key fourth and five, I think. 
we were driving to kind of put the game away. Huge player, called timeout. And, and I'm saying, man, you know, I'm talking to the offensive coach. What are we going to run here? Lynn looks me in my eye, Ryan. says, coach, give me the ball. I got you. So all we needed was the first down to ice the game. He goes 35, 40 yards, scampers for a touchdown. That's lit. So, you know, those three games stick out. Uh, another one, even though we lost this particular game, the block field goal with Boardman when they scooped it up and we lose on that play, Lynn had never been on a PAT field goal block team. So we called timeout to freeze the kicker. So I said, hey, Lynn, come here. Can you block this? Heck, Ryan, I'm, you know, hey, we're trying to win the game. Lynn says, Coach, I'm going to block it. And um, our defensive coordinator says, hey, we're going to put him on the left side, come off the left edge. Now, Lynn blocked it. Now, they scooped it up and ran, but Lynn, that's what Lynn brought to the table. He had never done that before, mm -hmm. and he blocked it. So another thing um, that I just, don't, I, I just want to get your opinion on, and that is, you know, it happened here at Harding, even though he wasn't playing for Harding, the, the punt return. Yeah. Or the, uh, the, what was supposed to be a punt. Now, I'm sitting on the sidelines watching it happen, and I was shooting it. It's gotten a lot of publicity. People don't realize that there was a hold, and it never really counted. But, but the mere athleticism of watching him carve up 11 guys is amazing. So can you kind of like, you know, put it in perspective of how much football you've seen when you watch somebody in that play and kind of maybe where that ranks to you is like just wow. It's a wow factor. Um, it ranks. I mean, you don't see Kit. He's back to punt. And then it wasn't like he, I mean, like he ran through guys. He juked some guys. He ran by guys. It, it wasn't like a fluke. I understand that when you watch that, it wasn't a fluke play. Like you know, he it was bobbling the ball or anything like that. I mean, he used all his gifts on that play to go a hundred and some odd yards because he was in the end zone. Like he didn't get tired. Anybody running down? Somebody didn't have the angle on him. I mean, that was a wow factor. Yeah. I mean, I, we can go on and on, right? I mean, this is – but, but you know, the funny thing is, Ryan, is that – so at the time when he chose to go to Kentucky, and, you know, players from Northeastern Ohio, the, North, the Midwest, but especially Northeastern Ohio, if you are a legitimate Division I football player, for the most part they want to go play in the Big Ten. So, you know, people are questioning, why, did, why is he going to Kentucky? Because at that time, you know, it was kind of, it wasn't the upper echelon of the SEC, but it was the SEC, the big, you know, arguably the best conference in the country. But it wasn't Alabama. It wasn't Auburn. It, you know what I mean? Yep. So, man, why is he going to Kentucky? Well, Lynn has kind of changed what young men in Ohio, Northeastern Ohio, and nationwide feel about Kentucky now. You know, obviously there was the relationship, the Youngstown factor with Coach Stoops, Vince, and Clink. Uh, so you had that. But still, you know, kids here, if you're good enough, you're going to play in the Big Ten. So I, I give, you know, Coach Stoops, Vince, and Coach Clink a lot of credit for getting this kid to come down. And, and Lynn has changed how high school kids feel about Kentucky football. Because Kentucky was basketball. Yeah. You, you didn't go to Kentucky to play football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does it surprise you at all that, you know, what he did at Liberty, what he did at Warren Harding, he also did in the SEC, you know what I mean? To say, hey, listen, I'm so versatile, you can literally put me anywhere and, and, and we're gonna succeed. No, not at all. We, as a staff, um, obviously we play on Friday, so we come in on Saturday and we, you know, we do what we have to do as a Warren Harding football staff, and then we'll say, hey, everybody, you know, we're watching Lynn tonight, or we're watching so and so, you know, guys. That, I mean, because we have guys who play college football that played here that I, I've been blessed to coach. We've had here, so you know, we'll watch Lynn either here or sometimes in SEC they're playing late afternoon or in the evening, and we're texting each other as he's making plays. And Terrence, well, no, we're not surprised. He just carried it. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to carry it from Kentucky to the NFL. And, and so whoever 
twos is land, they're getting a heck of a football player. A kid who can return punts, kickoffs. You can line him up as a nickelback. You can put him as a wildcat quarterback. You can put him at receiver. Whatever you choose to do. But I'm telling you, if 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 you ever if they whoever has the opportunity to draft him, you better take him. You better take him. Because the thing that Lynn does, if you question him, see, Lynn is smart. If you question Lynn, he uses that to drive him. It'll drive him. Oh, you question me that I can't do this? He'll show you. He'll show you. I'm just I'm, so I'm not surprised what he's doing and what he did in SEC. Arguably the best conference in the country. Ryan, if I understand, and you're talking about his IQ. So the kid has been playing receiver, even though he played quarterback in high school. So the kid has been playing in the SEC at receiver. So after week three, four, whatever, you move him to quarterback, and your offense just takes off. So that tells you the ability, but his IQ to be able to do that, to play that position, to get everybody lined up, to run the offense. Now, I'm quite sure they geared some things around his, his abilities, but to be able to do that, that takes a heck of an IQ. So how much, you know, I would imagine in the NFL draft process now, they have to do their homework more than ever sure. because they're just not able to bring these guys in and talk to them, you know, in person. Have have you received a lot of you know phone calls from NFL teams? Like how many and, and, and what are you what are you hearing? I've got probably eight questionnaires that I've had to fill out, and that started probably months ago. Um, a few phone calls uh, about him, and um, kind of what I'm hearing, second round. Um, there's obviously I'm not privy to say what teams, but um, that have shown. I guess the most interest, Ryan, but I'm hearing second, third round. Um, I'm just hoping that him not being able to participate, have a pro day, doesn't hurt him with his draft status. Um, but I, you know, um, whoever drafts him, when they're going to get a heck of a football player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think it's kind of a double-edged sword because he can't perform at the combine in terms of speed or the cone drill. He can't take part in his, his pro day, which may hurt him, but that means you have to rely on his tape, and his tape is pretty awesome. Well, you know, kind of what coaches say, I don't care what sport you coach, film don't lie. So, you know, you go and he has a pro day. Let's say he ran a bad time, or any player runs a bad time. He just has a bad day, as we all do. So now do you take that or do you take his game film? Because his game field is pr pretty impressive. You, you won't find – that's the funny thing. Like you won't find a game where he didn't play well. So, okay, he had a bad – no, you won't find a game he didn't play well. So you better use this game film against top-level competition. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like he was playing in some rinky-dink conference. I mean, he's playing against NFL caliber guys every Saturday. Perfect. Well, I got one more question for you, and I'm going to seriously put you on the spot with this one. <laughs> oh, don't, don't do it, Ryan. You know what's going to I, I, Don't do it, Ryan. No. I know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> but I'm going to, I just want you to put it in historical context here. Okay? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. So let's say just in the 25 years or so that I've been doing this, you know, when I think of the best players I've ever covered, there's so <laughs> many from Harding. Omar Provitt, Maurice Claret, Prescott Burgess, Boom, Mario, Lynn Bowden. So for you, it's been around. Where does where does he rank? Is he oh. one of the best? Is he the best you've ever coached? Oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna kill you for this one, <laughs> man. And I've seen them all. Um, and and the guy that gets lost in that because he's not a skilled player. James. Well, you forget about Corey. Oh yeah. Oh, um, well, Corey's a little bit before me. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, James and Corey weren't skill guys. But, you know, they have to. Absolutely. So for me, I think because um, he's a Hall of Famer, but he wasn't around. You know, Paul is at the top of that sure. mountain because he's an NFL Hall of Famer. Um, man, I, I, I would have to put Lynn there, right behind Paul. And, it, and that's not discrediting Mario, Omar, Reese. PJ, Boom, James, 
I, I mean, Corey, K1. I mean, I, I, I can go on and on and on. And but but Lynn is, I, I've seen him do some stuff that I, I have not seen a lot of guys do. And again, those guys that we just mentioned, man, those guys are great. But but now with that, Lynn had the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know we were ready to put him in a position to showcase all of his abilities, where those other guys were a receiver, running back. You know what I mean? So that's 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 just my personal perspective. But man, you, I knew you were gonna do that, Ryan. I'm gonna get you for this, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs>